Spoon stool number 39, Eric Ronis. You are not a spoon. Okay, if you know it. <laughs> 80s music, no? I know the song, I don't know the words. Okay, so um, over the summer I was driving in my car to Montpelier and that song came on, you know, the radio or my, my hit list or whatever and um, I'm singing along with it and 30 seconds later I blurt out to myself, but you're not a spoon. And this was unusual because I typically don't speak out loud to myself, I think loudly. Um, and so I thought, hmm, you're having an, an, an emotional reaction to something. What just happened in your mind? So I'm going to talk you through the 30 seconds in my mind between hearing that song and my outburst. Um, all human interaction for me is a meeting, okay? Um, obviously it is. And therefore it is also a melting. Hey, Barbara. Um, I was reading a lot of Martin Buber, who's um, a 20th century philosopher, last, this past summer. And um, Buber talks about something called genuine dialogue, all right? That when people meet and are actually really encountering each other, they treat each other as a thou and not as an it, okay? So if I'm talking to Ellen, it's not that Ellen can transactionally give me money or approve my curriculum or whatever it is, okay? Or um, Tyler is merely, yeah, you're there, Tyler, um, you know, the camera person. We treat each other as it's, okay? Um, that people fulfill functions as opposed to humans. I don't even know your name. What is your name? Jamie. Hi, Jamie. I'm Eric. See that? That was a meeting. I mean, I had, I had no agenda for, for what I wanted from you because you are not a spoon, okay? None of us are spoons. A spoon is something that we encounter for its function. I have a spoon, I eat my cereal with it, thank you, spoon, okay? Let's not treat other people that way. Um, I recently read a book called The Wisdom Jesus, and in it the, uh, the author notes that the Eucharist, the sacrament of the Eucharist, uh, is a genuine meeting place. Um, it offers an exchange through which you will be nurtured and grow. Right, so that the Eucharist, that, and I'm, I'm not a Catholic, but I'm assuming once a week, maybe, you have that sacrament, maybe you can do it more than that. But it's like a special time that's set aside for that special meeting and growing. But my point is, you can be doing it all the time. That that meeting, that growing, that nurturing happens any time two people or more encounter one another. And so what I'm going to ask you to do now, and thank you so much for coming today, is to actually take one minute, okay? One minute to meet and melt, all right? Meet someone that you don't know, or even that you do know, have a conversation with them, and melt with them. Allow yourself to actually become a different person because of that meeting, right? So you are not gonna be the same after this, Chuck. And that's the truth. I melt with you. Ready? Go, talk to someone for one minute. And don't treat them like an it. Melt with them. Meet them and melt. <laughs> Um, so, so you you almost didn't stay for this, right? You no, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was about to run to a class. But yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm glad I stayed. Um,
capstone, and that's been really interesting. I'm a uh, French American citizen, dual citizen. Um, oh, cool. And I'm 50% Irish, 50% French. Are you from France? I was born in the United States, but my dad's side of the family is entirely French. I'm a sec- I'm a technically a, okay. one and a half generation French, mm-hmm. because he came over when he was 26. I was master's in the United States. Cool, cool. Met my mother, mm-hmm. and now I'm here. And did you, do you speak French? Are you I can, so I can understand it very well. I can okay. speak it when I'm loved it. It was a great little place. Did not a lot of people. I was like slightly older at the time. So, so how old are you now? Uh, right now I'm 22. Okay. So you graduated from SATEC yeah. 10 years ago? Something like that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I, uh, what was it? It's, I got out. When did you go to high school? Got out as I was supposed to be 2018, so 2014. 2014. So. All right, so my son Jack started at State Tech. Finish up, please. Finish up, please, if you would. <laughs> Finish up. Um, so, um, and you can talk again later, but the, what I, I guess what I'm trying to point out is that there is the opportunity for Eucharist you know, some sort of like sacramental thing going on every time we encounter another person if we take advantage of it. Um, But not only are people not spoons, I was then thinking later on, so this is post like the the Melt With You song, I was thinking, well, why don't people do that more? Because I don't think people fear or think the other person's a spoon, they fear the other person's a knife, okay? Or if knife is not an appropriate thing because a knife is actually scary, let's say a fork. Okay? If I'm a fork, I could poke Ellen in you know, the cheek and hurt her, right? And sometimes we don't go for communication with another person because of that fear, because of that mistrust. I teach communication classes, and sometimes students are like, you know, I can't engage in a conversation with another person because I so disagree with them. Um, and especially today in our political climate, there really is a high level of, of mistrust. Not necessarily that um, the other person is going to stab me, but the other person is going to get prickly with me. All right? So back to Martin Buber. He says that when we have a genuine meeting, we receive the other person as our partner. But such a confirmation does not mean approval. No matter in what I am against the other person, by accepting them as my partner in genuine dialogue, I have affirmed them as a person. Is it possible to have conversations with people who we really disagree with and still affirm them as another person? Yes, it is. It's just I think we've lost our practice doing that. Um, Back to Buber again. In 1951, in the aftermath of World War II, he says, there is no salvation save through the renewal of dialogic relation, and this means, above all, through the overcoming of existential mistrust. So the next time you encounter a person, who you don't know, try to treat them as something other than silverware, okay? They're not a spoon who can do something for you. They're not a fork who's potentially out to prick you. And the act of meeting that person has the potential to be more than just like a a transactional, what's the word I used? Utilitarian transaction. Um, It is an act of alchemy. Okay, go out there and melt with one another. Thank you.